Hello and uh, welcome to a brand new episode of The Daily Debate. My name is Ahmed Nader and today we'll be focusing on uh, the presidential activities for today and President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi heading for France. And uh, we will be meeting uh, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, will be meeting the French counterpart Emmanuel Macron in Paris. We will be discussing the possible agenda of talks between the two presidents and the uh, visions between Egypt and France in different fields, more specifically regarding the Middle East and uh, the Eastern Mediterranean. And tonight I'm honored to be having with me in the studio to be shedding more light on the visit and the meeting between President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi and the French President is Dr. Sharif Amir, the Professor of uh, International Relations. Thank you very much for being with us tonight. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Anytime. We will be starting with a report about the visit of President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi on Sunday and the future meeting of President al-Sisi with the French counterpart Emmanuel Macron. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi is visiting the French capital Paris for a three-day official visit where he's accompanied by a high-level delegation and is set to meet his French counterpart Emmanuel Macron and other top French officials. The discussions of President al-Sisi and Macron on Monday are expected to tackle bilateral cooperation and regional and international issues of mutual concern. Recent tensions in the East Mediterranean, the Libyan and Syrian crises, counter-terrorism as well as reviving the Middle East peace process are among issues that are also expected to be addressed. Egypt and France enjoy close, friendly relations which have been enhanced in recent years. The two countries are keen on bolstering bilateral cooperation on economic, political and cultural levels. France is a very important economic partner to Egypt with the country having pumped 5 billion euros in current investments in the country. The trade exchange between the two sides have reached 3 billion euros. The two states are also working on enhancing cooperation in several communications and information technology fields. This is focusing in particular on capacity building, providing support for entrepreneurs, as well as research and development in the field of artificial intelligence. Over the past four years, mutual visits conducted by the two countries' heads and top officials have been intensified. The most recent visits were in 2019, with President Macron paying a visit to Egypt in January 2019, and in August 2019, President Sisi paid a return visit to France to participate in a Group of Seven summit. On the military level, the armed forces of both Egypt and France regularly conduct joint maritime drills in the Mediterranean Sea, with an aim to exchange expertise, confront threats, and maintain maritime security. Earlier in November, French Minister of Foreign Affairs Jean-Yves Le Durian visited Cairo and met with President Sisi and his counterpart, Foreign Minister Samah Shoukri. Welcome back. You're still watching the Daily Debate and uh, that was a report about the visit of President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi to France and the uh, future meeting between President al-Sisi and uh, the French President Emmanuel Macron among other top officials in uh, France. Dr. Sharif Amir is here with me tonight and I'll be asking you first about the strategic importance of such a visit. Well, it's obvious, as it was said in the report, that things are not going very well in the Eastern Mediterranean. Um, I think that Egypt and France are now um, concerned about um, what is going on by the Turkish regime in this part of the, the world. 
uh, we have seen um, lately even the Turkish dictator Erdogan uh, I don't know how he managed to uh, say that France's problem is Emmanuel Macron and he has to leave so uh, I think that uh, there is a mutual concern for Egypt and uh, France because the stability in this region especially in the eastern Mediterranean is now um, an, an explosive point for both Europe and the Middle East because of the gas fields because of the Turkish aggression that taking place everywhere land and sea whether in Libya whether in Syria whether in Iraq even in uh, in Nagorno-Karabakh uh, it's everywhere now and even in Somalia they are present there so I think that now we are trying to work with our allies President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi warned from the first day that we have to strengthen the relationship with both with Greece, Cyprus and who are part of Europe, the European Union and also France. I think that uh, France is having hard times with, uh, with uh, Turkey now and they need to work with special allies like Egypt. Of course, we will be uh, discussing uh, this important issue in detail as uh, France in specific has called for more sanctions on Turkey regarding the Eastern Mediterranean uh, issue. But regarding the other important issues on the agenda of uh, the talks between President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi and the French counterpart, how do you see them in general? Well, uh, I think that the, this visit is very important following the visit of Prime, uh, the, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of France, Mr. Jean-Yves Le Drian, uh, because we all know what took place recently in France concerning the, the cartoons and uh, the, the, the disputes that took place uh, in, in, inside France between the Muslim community and uh, the French government and the speech was given by President uh, Emmanuel Macron at that time was not really welcomed by many uh, um, people in the Muslim world. I think Egypt has the moderate uh, vision. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi is trying to explain to the Western world the sensitivity of such a speech to the Muslim world and also he's trying to bring to the Muslim world the vision of the Europeans about this issue because I think that uh, when President Macron uh, gave his speech about Islam, I think he was uh, trying to talk to the, um, to the Muslim community there as he talks to all the religious communities there. So it's about um, what they call it, the laïcité. It means that uh, there, is, uh, uh, there is no religion in, in the society. Uh, it's the French Revolution, the principles of the Republic that um, religion has to be put aside. Everyone has the right to criticize any religion as he wishes. So I think this was not um, um, reflected a bad vision about France outside France. Mm -hmm. But this speech was intended to the inside. Mm -hmm. So I think that President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, uh, he has a special role in that, in explaining uh, Egypt's uh, vision uh, as hosting Al-Azhar and also trying to understand the vision of a Western leader like Emmanuel Macron about this topic. Yes, regarding the uh, Middle East, what are the topics and um, the visions of both Egypt and France regarding the hot topics in the Middle East now? Well, we have two boiling uh, issues. It's, it's Syria and Libya. Yes. And Libya, we all know that France participated in the ousting of Gaddafi during the presidency of Nicolas Sarkozy with the NATO forces. And now uh, France is trying to deal with what's taking place um, as instability in Libya. Interference from Turkey by sending uh, mercenaries there. We have seen that there was a clash between uh, the, the navy boats of France and Turkey because Turkey was sending mercenaries into Libya. So because France is, is very, very worried about the, the immigration. Egypt worked a lot to prevent the illegal immigration. Mm. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi from the first day in office, he said to our partners in Europe, listen, 
your security is our security. We have to work together. If we will prevent terrorism, if we, uh, terrorist uh, groups in Libya, we will fight them. And we will try to work stability to, uh, into stability for the Libyan people. Many issues will be solved. Mm -hmm. I think our friends in Rome understand, understood that in France, in, in Berlin, and in Paris. So I think that now President Sisi um, um, is giving the assurances that if you want stability in the Middle East, stability in Libya, we can work together. And the proof of that, as it was said in the report, there is always military maneuvers between Egypt and France. Mm. Uh, France trusted Egypt about the Mistral. They don't sell arms to any countries except those who have specific doctrine of defense and fighting terrorism. Mm -hmm. That's why we got the Rafale, we got the Mistral, we got the Fren, we got many uh, um, uh, arms from, from France. And I think that this cooperation is for the security of the whole Mediterranean, for Europe and for the Middle East. The other issue is yes. Syria. Mm -hmm. I think that now President Macron, when, when he visited Le Lebanon lately, he wanted to bring a new vision of uh, France's um, uh, foreign policy in this, uh, in this region. The Levant was always a French man, under the French mandate. There is a close relationship between Syria, Lebanon and France culturally. So I think that now he understands President Macron that the, the, the fact that uh, a country like Turkey, again Turkey, is occupying parts of uh, Syria like Idlib. This is a violation of the international law. We have to preserve the Syrian integrity and sovereignty and work uh, for a solution there. So these are many uh, uh, b the main boiling points in the discussions. We've seen hard stances uh, by both presidents, President Abdel Fattah Hassisi and the French president towards uh, Turkey in Libya, more specifically in the past. And um, even regarding the Eastern Mediterranean dispute between uh, Turkey, Cyprus and, uh, of course, Greece and Egypt, mm. as we have seen the stances made by both presidents of Egypt and France. But do you think that uh, we could be seeing another hard stance by the French president regarding the Turkish intervention in Libya, not just the Eastern Mediterranean? I think that uh, France is trying now to figure out who's winning inside Libya. Uh, whether the Sarraj government or uh, General uh, Marshal Khalifa Haftar. Uh, they are trying to figure out how things will go politically in the inside. Uh, the problem of Turkey's presence there is not only the mercenaries, that they are, there is a government working for Ankara. Mm. And this government is accepting all the violations, that's very weird, accepting all the violations of the sovereignty of Libya. So uh, France is very keen to find out um, a way uh, how to, mm, to manage to create a political uh, atmosphere that will set the grounds for a unity of the government in Libya which will ask Turkey to get out. Mm -hmm. And I think this would take place with the help of President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi because fortunately we have many allies inside Libya the Libyan people, they love Egypt, they want to work with Egypt, they trust Egypt m m millions of times more than they trust Erdogan. So uh, I think that France uh, is trying to negotiate who could be the solution inside Libya. Mm. But the main problem, which is Turkey, the mercenaries and the terrorist camps and the illegal immigrations, these are facts on the ground. And the only solution is to work with a strong ally, which is Egypt, because Tunisia, we all know there is instability there now. Um, Algeria, they, they prefer not to intervene in any outside problems. So I think that the only partner in the Mediterranean was a strong diplomacy, strong army, and a strong leader who can, like President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, who's trustworthy. We mm. never b blackmail the, the Europeans as Erdogan does. Mm. So there is a trust, there is a mutual... Um, and the honesty and the uh, integrity. Of course, mm. when President al-Sisi gave his word at the beginning that we will fight together terrorism, but in respect of Egypt's so sovereignty. For example, whenever there is uh, some uh, comments about human rights, as the French say it uh, in Egypt, 
We, we stand strongly and we said these are internal uh, issues in Egypt as France has its own issues. Yes. They have to respect it, but we work together. We never blackmailed our uh, uh, European friends. We give them all the assurances that we will work together and work for a better atmosphere in the Mediterranean. I think also our friends in Greece, they know that Egypt now is reliable. Egypt is a strong ally defending their interests and the interests of Egypt. Mm -hmm. yeah, speaking of the bilateral ties between Egypt and France, they are deeply rooted and they are dating back to 1798, 200 or 230 years of bilateral relations. How do you see the development of uh, the bilateral relations between Egypt and France in the past few years and more specifically under the tenure of uh, President Assisi? Well, um, I lived in France for, uh, for, for many years and uh, the French people since their early years in school they study Egypt's history yes. and they love Egypt and mm. one, of, uh, one of their passions... There's always fascination, fascination about, Egypt, about the yes. pharaohs and, mm. and to visit Egypt mm. and they um, always, they, if they want to learn Arabic they come to Cairo because they know this is the only place that they will have the classic Arabic. So, uh, and we have seen the French universities here in Egypt, the yes. French schools. Uh, they are uh, rooted mm. uh, since the 20th century. Historic. Oh, yeah, so yes. historic. Oh. So, um, the French language was at the beginning in um, uh, till mid 1950s was part of the Egyptian citizen uh, who mm. speaks by uh, mm. two languages, mm. English and French. Uh, so I think that the French, um, there, is, there is, let's say, uh, this love relationship between France and, and Egypt on the ground of culture, history, and uh, also in, in, in politics because uh, I think that uh, um, Egypt managed uh, at a certain time when we started the, uh, the peace process in the 1970s, France stood with Egypt and defended Egypt's position and the relations between President Mitterrand and President Mubarak and President Chirac and President Mubarak and Sarkozy and then now with uh, President Emmanuel Macron and President Abdel Fattah Sisi are excellent. I think now the, the, the relations are more and more get, getting more stronger. Why? Because the fact that President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi is a charismatic president mm. and how he, he managed to, broke, uh, to, to break this, uh, the, uh, this ice that was created in 2013 when Egypt had its revolution against the Muslim Brotherhood and unfortunately Europe at that time was against us. He, he, he took the plane and he went to all the, the capitals in Europe and spoke uh, frankly about Egypt's vision and he created a new atmosphere. Mm. So I think that uh, President Emmanuel Macron, he knows very well that President Sisi worked with uh, his predecessor, Francois Hollande, and he will work also with President, uh, and that, that it will be continuity. And let me tell you that um, someone like uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Jean-Yves Le Drian, he was Minister of Defense at the time of Francois Hollande when we got the Rafale and the Mistral, and now he is uh, the, the foreign minister, and I think he has excellent relations with President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. He's a very important figure in France. He's very influential, and he has also uh, excellent relations with our foreign minister, Mr. Samah Shukri. Yes, one of the files that are happening or happened in the past few weeks in the Middle East is also the issue of uh, Lebanon and the issue of helping Lebanon through mm. um, the conference that took place in the past few days with the participation of President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi and the French President Emmanuel Macron. How do you see um, the visions of both nations regarding Lebanon and uh, helping the nation in the near future? So the crises in Lebanon are very, very uh, complicated and let's be frank, it's because of the presence of the Iranian influence yes. and I think that this is the issue that concerning all the Gulf states, not only Egypt and uh, we are trying to explain it also to our friends in Europe. Um, that um, it's not the problem of the existence of Hezbollah, the, 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 it's the problem about how Iran is trying to influence the stability of the Arab countries. 
and I think that France is, is understanding that uh, now we have uh, um, uh, the candidate to become pr Prime Minister uh, Saad Al Hariri is trying to form a government and I think that he explained to the France to, to, to the French government why things are getting slow because things are not going well because of the pressure from Tehran. Mm -hmm. And I think that President Sisi is giving the same message also to the French and to all the Europeans that we can work together to develop Lebanon. We have no problem about that. The second day when the, there was this, uh, the, for, uh, the 4th of August uh, uh, and the explosion, explosion blast, yes. Egypt's uh, presence were everywhere in Lebanon. We had our uh, military aid there. We, we were uh, in assistance for the friends. And doctors uh, and, and field doctors, hospitals. Of course. Yes. And Emmanuel Macron, the president of France, met, went by himself the second day also. So that means that both countries, uh, Egypt and France, have specific goal about not letting Lebanon fall mm. because it's not in the interest of anyone it would be a total chaos so I think that the French are now getting the message that there is an interior political problem in Lebanon and it's about interference again as like in Libya there is Turkey interfering there is Iran interfering also in Lebanon and I think it will take time it will depend also about who will be uh, in the administration in the United States because we don't know it's, uh, until now there is no official uh, um, um, signs but, yes. but we, 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 we think that things uh, would change for Iran dramatically mm. and, and this will affect Lebanon. Mm. Do you think there will be the same sanctions applied on Iran as happened with um, the former president of the United States Barack Obama? Um, Look, the, there is, the, the equation changed dramat dramatically last week after the assassination of um, Mr. Hassan Zadeh, who was the head of the scientific and nuclear research in Iran. This changed a lot in the Middle East, like the assassination of uh, Soleimani, General Soleimani. So I think um, um, Iran now is, is figuring out to slow down or to go forward again. Mm. And according to that, to the Iranian decision, things will change in the Middle mm. East. But I think it's that... It's like a chess game. Of course. Uh, but I think that if Joe Biden will be the president, I think that um, Saudi Arabia, Israel, Egypt, all the peace camp are not welcoming the, poli the politics of Tehran or, or in fueling Yemen, fueling the situation in Syria, in Lebanon, and trying to destabilize other Gulf countries like Bahrain and the Emirates. Uh, look what's going on uh, uh, with the Emirates in the Gulf. They're trying to, to, to disrupt the, the oil tankers going on out from the, uh, the Strait of Hormuz. The Iranian Revolutionary Guard is harassing everyone there. So I think that um, Joe Biden or the American administration or, or whatever, whoever will come, has to deal with the allies of America. Mm. And Europe now has to understand that all the Gulf states, including Egypt, are not welcoming the interference of Tehran in the politics of the Middle East. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, speaking on uh, the economic cooperation between Egypt and France, during the G7 summit in uh, 2019, both presidents pledged to be having more economic cooperation in the upcoming years. We did see what happened in 2020 with the coronavirus pandemic sweeping all over the world, but how did you see those pledges being translated on the ground in terms of economic cooperation and boosting that? Well, um, we are working in several domains uh, now. We are working, for example, in the technology field, in the telecommunications with the usual set and all the, the satellites that we're, we're uh, we are engaging in because I think that it's not now the, the econo economic relations is not only about goods now it's about technology mm. it's about uh, digital uh, revolution and I think that France is very present in Egypt's um, um, development in this field especially in the new administra administrative cap capital Egypt is trying to strengthen this relation because France has a huge experience in this field. So uh, in addition to all that, 
we have we have built many cities now, whether in uh, in uh, Matruh, whether in the, the sector of the Suez Canal. So there is huge fields of investment. I think that France needs new partners, strong partners, and I think Egypt is the the perfect candidate. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there will be uh, other areas of investment that President Abdel Fattah Hassisi will be uh, presenting for the French uh, possible investors in the future? There was always the topic of agriculture investment because Egypt uh, were, was always blocked by the restrictions of some conditions in the EU. And let's say fortunately and unfortunately, the coronavirus when it took place, Europe was isolated at a certain time and some countries needed uh, new goods uh, from other countries. And now Egypt is preparing a new, uh, um, a new step to tell them we, we could export our agriculture products with new conditions. Mm. Um, there is um, an important point is that Turkey was taking a very important space in the economic relations between Europe and especially with France. Now that is diminishing and slowly uh, fading because the Turkish economy is in a disastrous situation now. Yes. I think Egypt now would be an excellent replacement mm. because it's not only a political, military and diplomacy, diplomatic ally, it's all also a country developing its economy and it's booming. Mm. And that's, that, this gives really the investor assurance that there is infrastructure, there is telecommunications, there is security and there is law and order. Mm. Yes, we will be having more information on the possible investments in terms of uh, technology, in terms of even cultural um, expertise and exchange between Egypt and France in the upcoming report. So let's see it. President Abdel Fattah Sisi is visiting France for a three-day official visit to meet his French counterpart Emmanuel Macron and discuss a host of issues of mutual concern. Egypt and France enjoy very strong historical and contemporary relations that date to centuries old. There has been remarkable dialogue, coordination and proximity in views on the issues influencing the security and stability of the Middle East region and Europe. Military deals have expanded starting in 2015 to also include Mistral helicopter carriers, Rafale fighters, multi-purpose frigates and more. In addition, joint military exercises have been taking place, such as the Cleopatra naval and urban exercises launched in 2017, the Nefertari air exercise, the Ramses military exercise and the Bright Star exercises comprised of multiple nationalities. Trade exchanges between Egypt and France reached 1.546 billion euros in the first eight months of 2017, making an increase of 12% from the 1.38 million euros achieved during the same period last year. French investments in Egypt amount to 5 billion euros, representing through 160 companies hiring 30,000 employees in the sectors of food manufacturing, construction, energy, telecommunications, retail, banking, programming, medicine, transportation and tourism. The top Egyptian exports to France are petrochemicals, liquefied petroleum gas, grains, citrus and vegetables. French companies have executed the Cairo Metro, launched the Nysat satellites, installed a mobile phone network, restored the Suez cement factory, and constructed the Alexandria oil refinery, water supply stations in Fayoum, and the 10th of Ramadan industrial zone, Terminal 3 at Cairo Airport and its radar, and electricity station in Tanta, among other projects. From 1974 through 2016, 40 cooperation protocols and agreements were signed between both countries in support of the economic development in Egypt. In 2016, 10 memoranda of understanding valued at 308 million euros were also signed. On a cultural note, French Egyptian Egyptology institutes and laboratories have unveiled many archaeological discoveries. 
France also helped with renovating libraries, equipping museums and collaborating in the fields of publishing, education and scientific research. Egypt's Francophone population amounted to 2.8 million French speakers in 2010. It became a member state in the International Francophone Organization in 1983. Welcome back. You're still watching the Daily Debate and an episode uh, regarding the visit uh, of President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi to France and the meeting of uh, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi that will be held with uh, top French officials and, of course, the French counterpart Emmanuel Macron. We did see in the past report uh, the Egyptian-French relations and the cooperation in different fields like uh, technology, culture, um, even uh, developing the metro lines, developing uh, the airport here in Egypt. But I would like to ask about the defense relations between Egypt and France. As you've mentioned in the first part of uh, the episode, there is cooperation, constant cooperation uh, between Egypt and France in terms of acquiring new weapons and uh, new arms. Uh, speaking of the defense relations under President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, under his tenure, how do you see them with France? First of all, uh, France uh, has to, uh, because it's ab uh, France is abiding also to the, to the EU rules, they have to work with countries who work uh, upon the rules of stability and security, not rogue countries. That's why uh, the era of uh, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi gave assurances that Egypt is a strong military partner. Uh, when we acri uh, acquired the Rafale, uh, it was very prestigious, not because we were selected for that, it's also because when I was there in France, I was told that the Egyptian pilots were excellent mm -hmm. in the training. Uh, usually the Rafale takes a few months for um, controlling all the systems. Mm -hmm. uh, the Egyptian pilots took uh, less than two weeks in working on it. Mm -hmm. And they said this was... Uh, uh, not a surprise because they know that Egyptians know how to deal with these kind of weapons, but it was technologically, it was very complicated mm -hmm. and how the Egyptian pilots were excellent in, 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 in concentrating in guiding all these equipments. So this was a, a good sign for the French, the French that they have a strong ally that will know how to use these weapons. Same thing for the Mistral. Uh, when we got it, we knew how to deploy it in the Middle East in a way to maintain security. And that's why France now is working with Egypt, not only in combating terrorism in Libya on the ground, uh, because let's say now this kind of war is about special operations, about um, intelligence, so there is no uh, really clear vision about what's taking on the ground. It's, these are secret operations. But let's say what, what we see um, with our bare eyes is what's going on in the Mediterranean. The Navy, Egypt has an excellent Navy now, and President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi is very keen that uh, uh, Egypt's role in the Mediterranean will be the security. We have heard, for example, a few days ago there was the maneuvers between Egypt and our friends in, Euro in, in, in France and uh, Greece. Mm. And uh, one of uh, the Turkish naval uh, ships called uh, Kamal Rais uh, tried to go into the Egyptian uh, sovereignty and uh, water waters. Yes. And when it crossed it, 
Egypt uh, forces gave naval forces gave this the alarm. It's the international law that they should leave immediately, mm -hmm. and they didn't leave. So it was in front of the eyes of the world. So immediately, the Egyptian uh, ship r rushed quickly to the target to destroy it, and then the Turkish naval forces just disappeared and couldn't stand. Mm -hmm. I think this in diplomacy is known that. Uh, it's a kind of show of force and muscles. They wanted to test us in front of the French, in front of the Greeks, and see how Egypt will react. Well, we reacted swiftly according to the international law. And this is the excellence of this way of dealing. We didn't open fire immediately. We waited until the international law rules are being applied they don't answer it you're in my waters i will i have all the rights to fight back mm -hmm. so i think that's why we have excellent military uh, cooperation it's about that and also about the satellites we are engaging in military satellites that will help egypt to fight terrorism in sinai also and the infiltration that coming from there Regarding the Turkish provocations in the Mediterranean and in the Middle East, how do you see the possible messages that could be sent out by both presidents regarding uh, the meeting? Well, the message is um, Turkey has to abide to the international law. Mm. If it's uh, a rogue state, it has to, a rogue regime, it has to uh, uh, abide to the international law after, uh, at the end of the day because French forces, Egyptian forces are present we will defend our uh, economic zones. We will not give up for that. And I think that Erdogan, uh, who is oppressing his own people and his own army, mm. uh, has no way to maneuver whether it was Egypt or France now in the Eastern Mediterranean. As I said, this was a test. He was trying to see our reaction and how we will deal with it. They disappeared from the zone, and I think that the message now is clear with this visit of President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi and the meeting with President Macron that it's not, because if it was about only economics, it would have been some invoice, but this meeting after these provocations mm. is a strong message for Ankara that there will be harsh uh, replies whenever the international law, and I precise the international law, will be violated by Turkey, we have all the right to answer swiftly, quickly, and with a level force. Yeah, speaking of the harsh reply, do you think that certain decisions could be made by the European Union, for example, against Turkey, with the support of uh, France, as we did see France calling in the past few weeks uh, for more measures, for more decisions, for harsher decisions, against Turkey for the gas exploration um, uh, drills uh, being taking place in uh, the Mediterranean, the Eastern Mediterranean, and with support of Egypt as well? Well, uh, look, Greece is a part of the, the European Union. Yes. So I think that uh, France is concerned whenever Greece sovereignty is being violated, mm. when uh, the Greek islands are being um, surrounded by uh, the Turkish Navy, when the airspace of Greece, which is European airspace, being violated. I think that now is whole Europe is being violated. Mm -hmm. And I think that that means that um, Turkey is messing with the European Union. Uh, I understand the mentality of, uh, of the Turkish regime. It's about their bargaining with the, the immigration, the refugees, yes. and the, that they are part of NATO. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that NATO, even President Macron said it ha it's, it's dead clinically. Mm -hmm. And this was criticized by many even in, in Germany, but it's true, he said, it's, it's that critically because we have a handicapped uh, part of the body of NATO, which is Turkey. Mm. So he said, how we will fight Turkey if we have an alliance with this aggression, aggressor? Mm. So I think now things will change dramatically. Uh, France is respecting NATO, but when it comes to its sovereignty, it comes to its security, working with Egypt, is the ultimatum and they will do it and i think that now the message is very clear for the turkish regime that it's you're dealing with egypt france greece cyprus if they are trying to mess with any of these countries 
I think that Europe, which is France and Greece, will have all Europe against Turkey. Uh, speaking of the other meetings that President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi will be holding in France, he will be meeting with the French uh, Foreign Minister as he did in early November in mm. Egypt here. Uh, how do you see the talks going back and forth in Egypt in November and in France in December? Well, uh, diplomatically, I think that Egypt needs now um, uh, some support especially about a new case, which is the Ethiopian uh, barrage. I think that uh, the dam that was being built, the Renaissance Dam, I think that we have to acquire international support for our case. Mm. We are explaining to France because we are going to the International Court, we are going to the UN Security Council, we are talking to every uh, peaceful uh, means about e peaceful means. So I think that we are explaining also our case that we have to defend our rights, our sovereignty in the Nile waters. So this would be one of the issues because France will defend Egypt's position whenever our sovereignty in, in, in the Nile will be uh, threatened. Mm. How can that uh, defense be translated on the ground, specifically in Europe and the rest of the world? Well, uh, well, first of all, it's due, the media. The media, it's, they, they, I think that they will, the, the media uh, uh, in the West will, will try to find out what is going on in Ethiopia. Unfortunately, uh, we are seeing the massacres committed by the government there against the Tigray uh, part. So uh, we are all concerned. Uh, Africa is very important for, uh, for uh, France. Yes. Um, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, when he went to South Sudan, I think the message was also clear. His both visit to France and to, uh, to um, South, uh, Sudan. South Sudan and the military maneuvers with Sudan was the first in history between both countries. I think that we are giving strong messages that uh, we are in a small world, we are in the same backyard and what will influence Egypt will influence everyone. Mm -hmm. So I think that in the media they will work about it. If we will ever go to the Security Council, they will also be there for us um, for any international mediation. And of course we are trying to explain to the Europeans that the situation inside Ethiopia is very critical. Uh, the people are not happy with the government there. Mm -hmm. Many problems are taking place. And I think that at a certain time, uh, the Europeans have to use their influence to tell the regime there to find a solution to, pe to keep peace inside Ethiopia and outside Ethiopia with, uh, with us and uh, its neighbors. Yes, Doctor, you've mentioned uh, the visits made by President yes. Abdel Fattah al-Sisi to South Sudan. That was a historic visit, the oh. first by mm. an Egyptian president and an Arab leader. How do you see that? What is the importance of it and the timing of it as well? Well, the timing is, uh, first of all, that President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi is going by himself there. Of course, uh, this was very uh, honoring for the, uh, the, the government there, which experienced, unfortunately, many difficulties. But we in, in, in mediated in peace uh, between the factions, the rival factions. General Abbas Kamel, uh, the head of uh, the intelligence, was present every time there were negotiations. We managed to, to create this uh, kind of peace. Mm -hmm. We built a medical center, a huge medical center in Juba. So I think that President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, uh, when he made this visit, is very clear to Ethiopia also, mm -hmm. that we have strong allies in this region. We have very, very uh, clear vision about what's taking place. We would not like to see any ethnic cleansing inside Ethiopia because every part of Africa is, is also a part of us as Africans, and we do not wish to see any ethnic cleansing that, that like what is taking and there in the decree. So if any help will be asked at any time, we have friends everywhere to deploy our, let's say, our diplomatic means yes. on the ground. In the same week, or in the past week, in the middle of it, we did see uh, another meeting between President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi and the Palestinian President yes. uh, Mahmoud Abbas mm. in Cairo. The importance of uh, such a visit and the timing of it, uh, specifically with the latest developments regarding the whole of the Arab world mm. and not just Palestine. 
uh, well, the message was clear. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi told uh, President Mahmoud Abbas that, uh, uh, look, uh, Egypt is prepared to, to, to be the broker of peace between Israel and the Palestinians again. Mm. I think this is, uh, this is a renewed message. Um, unfortunately, at a certain time, the Palestinians were refusing to listen to Egypt's vision about that. But now, when the Gulf states are signing peace treaties with Israel, Sudan is signing peace treaty with Israel. We we heard about some rumors about um, uh, um, collaboration between Saudi Arabia and Israel about that. We we're not certain about it, but let's say the atmosphere is about peace. I think that the message is very clear for the Palestinian authorities. There is no way to waste time anymore. Mm. Lots of uh, occasions were were lost N since 1977 be uh, when when the peace talks between Israel and Egypt started at the, and, and the Camp David Accords and uh, through the, the the era of President Mubarak also at the Oslo Peace Accords we always said we are present there to defend the Palestinians mm -hmm. at any time but unfortunately when there was this split between Gaza and Ramallah and then Gaza and the Hamas started working with Turkey, with Qatar, with Tehran, with Iran. I think things went out of control. And now I think that the message is very clear by President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. Egypt still present as it was in 1977. It's still now in 2020 and 2021. We are very clear. We want peace. We will stand by the Palestinians. Still, there is time to, to maintain any uh, land for the Palestinians. I hope, I hope that the Palestinians will accept Egypt's mediation before it's too late. I think that uh, Prime Minister, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, he respects very um, he, highly, he looks very highly to President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi because now Egypt is a strong country, strong diplomacy and a peace guarantor. So I think the, 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 now the situation is very relieving for the Palestinians. The Emirates, the Bahrain, and, all, and even Sudan, they're all now trying to, mean, to prepare for a peaceful era. And now Egypt is telling them, come to the Arab side again. Don't listen to Turkey. Don't listen to Iran. Listen to us, as we have done with our, our brothers in Iraq. We are telling them, join the Arab, the Arab umbrella again. Come and work with us. We are working with you till the last chance. And this proves what you have said in the first part of the program, Dr. Sharif mm -hmm. Amir, that Egypt is uh, the link between Europe, between yes. Africa, between the Middle East, as in the space of eight or nine days. Um, three important meetings taking place between the President Abdel Fattah mm -hmm. Sisi and the presidents of South Sudan, and then Palestine, and then uh, France. How do you see the future of as you mentioned right now, peace in the region with those diplomatic efforts of President Assisi. I think that um, it has uh, two uh, faces. The first one is about security and strong presence in this region. Unfortunately, the Middle East, um, <laughs> let's call it a nasty background. It's volatile. As you see, a country like Turkey sending ships into uh, another country's uh, w uh, sovereign waters. Um, this is not a respectful uh, act. So we have to present to the, to the world both uh, faces of the same coin, that we are strong to defend security and defend geopolitical interests. But in the same time, peace and those two parts cannot work without a personality, strong personality. Mm -hmm except like people like President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, because he's a leader, like I said, he gives his word and it's very respected outside Egypt. Mm. Uh, as he's doing here in Egypt when there is a project, he wants a timetable. So he's, he has the same mentality working outside. We have to work for peace. And I will give my word about one, two, three, these points. Mm. And sovereignty, Egypt's sovereignty is a red line. It's very clear now. So I think uh, he will be an excellent peace mediator uh, because I think that the Gulf states need 
Egypt now more than ever because I know that Iran and Turkey will play the card of collaboration with Israel. They are collaborating with Israel since uh, years ago, but in, in secret uh, and fueling wars. They never went with them it was their armies, but we fought with our sons and in the wars and we paid a heavy price. So I think now peace and President Abdel Fattah Sisi is from the, military, the prestigious military institute. He knows that war is something that will cost a lot. It's the last uh, option and uh, we have to work always for peace. That's why he understands very well that um, working with all our brothers in the Arab world and our partners in Europe could lead to, I, I won't say uh, eternal peace, but to a certain peace agreement mm. that will block Iran and Turkey from interfering and fueling the situation. Yes, uh, Dr. Sharif Amir, the Professor of International Relations, thank, thank you, you very much for being with us tonight on the Daily Debate. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, this brings us to the end of uh, the Daily Debate for tonight. Thank you for watching and goodbye.